Welcome to the lab portion of this lesson. I'm in Cisco SDM right now and I'm connected to R1 which is sitting to my right. You might be able to hear the fan on that a little bit. R1 is a Cisco 2610XM and it's rocking a buck 28 of RAM. This is your start page on your SDM as indicated by the home button being depressed. What I'd like to go through real quick before we get started here is that what I suggest strongly, especially in a lab situation like this where it's just learning, go ahead to edit preferences and make sure that this first checkbox is checked. Preview commands before delivering to the router. What this is going to do is it's going to add an extra step to any configuration you make on the SDM, but the learning benefit is great because it's going to show you the actual commands that are being delivered from the SDM to your router when you make that change. So I don't have a network topology drawn up here, not really necessary. I've got the router, it's connecting to a switch. That switch is also connected to this PC. On the PC, I am running Kiwi Syslog Service Manager. So this is a um, Syslog server. You can go ahead and download this. I believe this is a demo version. You can also get free versions of this that are limited, but I'll have more information about that in the lesson notes. And I also have a connection to R1 via Secure CRT. Um, I've had this set up so that we are able to access it through SDM. So without further ado, let's get started here. Let's first go to see where we would monitor syslogging. And obviously we're going to click the monitor button at the top here. And then we'll have a list of tasks here. And in this case, you're going to have a nice little notebook looking icon that says logging. Click on that dude and here we are. And you'll have four tabs here. We're going to be looking at syslog today. So firewall log and uh, SDEE message log are different. App security log, I don't even think I've played with that before. If you remember from the theory section and the slides, logging buffered is the local buffer on the router and that's currently disabled. Logging host, that's the list of remote syslog servers that we have configured, and obviously there are none configured, so remote syslogging is not enabled. The uh, logging level for the buffer is none because it's not enabled, obviously. There's a location where all our messages would show up. So we don't have any logging set up at all here, and that's probably going to be your default out of the box. It could depend upon the version whether you have local logging enabled via the buffer, but in this case with the 2610XM, it is not enabled by default. So without further ado, let's go to the configuration portion. And the first step to getting to the configuration portion is probably pretty obvious. You're going to want to click on this icon with the gears that says configure. Now the second part is where you could get a little bit confused because when we were in monitor, we did have an icon for logging, but if we go over to configure, you can see we've got interfaces, firewall, blah, 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 blah. But if you look through this, there is no logging icon here. What I wanted to show you here is that this is a good opportunity for you to use the Cisco SDM help and that's that big gold question mark up there. And this will launch in unfortunately IE, but it is what it is. So go home, getting started. I would look through this. It's actually got some really good information here, but what we want to do today is we just want to get to the logging configuration. So we go to search and you could try configuring and enter. Uh, it's got the firewall log. That's not what we're looking for. SDM iOS auto secure. Nothing there. What I type in is obviously because it's already got the autocomplete is syslog. Go ahead and hit that and it's not the first few choices here, but you can see there's one for logging and one for syslog. Let's see logging. So logging really doesn't give us a whole lot there. It's just an overview. Let's go back and syslog. If we click on this, this gives us some more information. What we're looking for is this bit here, logging host, go to additional tasks, router properties, and the logging window. So if you're lost in SDM or you can't see an obvious thing to click on to get to where you want to for the configuration, go ahead and, and try out the help. The help is actually not that bad. And so here we are, configuration, it told us to go to additional tasks. So if you don't see something listed here, then go to additional tasks and that will open up this pane right here which has a bunch of different stuff that you can configure here. You'll find a lot of stuff that you will configure from this area. The help did tell us to hit router properties and that is at the top. We'll open up this and then we can see date time NTP logging. Click on that guy. You're probably going to want to commit the steps to memory, the config, additional tasks, router property, logging if this comes up in the CCNA security exam because I'm guessing they're probably not going to give you access to the SDM help. So the first thing we look at here is our logging setup. This is what we have configured and this reflects what we saw in the other window. Syslog is disabled, uh, logging buffer. So syslog here basically means remote logging and it's disabled. 
Logging to the buffer is also disabled. That's our local logging. Since it's disabled, we don't have a logging size. Logging level refers to your local logging buffer. So these guys are all grouped together. I don't know why they stuck the host logging level down here. It probably should have been up there and they probably should have mentioned that this was remote syslog, but I'm not a GUI designer, so I won't question them. What this does show, and this is what I brought up in the slides, is that by default, the host logging level, that is the logging level for syslog messages sent to a remote syslog server, is set to informational or level six. Whereas if you enable logging buffer on the router, it is generally, again, it depends on your platform or iOS, but generally it's gonna be seven. So there is a difference there. Uh, you might want to keep that in mind and maybe keep that in the back of your head for the test too because I can see that being a question. So let's go ahead and click the next obvious button which is edit and that's going to pop up this window here and this is where we do all our actual configuration. If we want to enable logging here it's actually enabled but that's kind of a misnomer because it's not truly enabled until you specify a remote server. Uh, so, you know, you can't just put in logging host and then nothing after that. So it's not really enabled. That's one of those things that you might want to keep in mind too for the exam. If they say, is this enabled? Well, your gut reaction would be like, yeah, you've got it clicked, it's enabled. It's not enabled to you actually put in an IP address for the remote syslog server. We're gonna to get to that in a bit. Let's go ahead and the first run through here, let's go ahead and enable our local logging. So this is logging that is only on the router. If I pop the router back up here, the way that I can verify this, if I do a show logging, I generally don't type this whole thing out, it's usually sh and then log. And you can see here, this is the verification from the CLI that we don't have this enabled. Um, if it was enabled, we would see messages down here and buffer logging is disabled. Let's go ahead and enable it here and we could do that simply by clicking that. And these are the defaults, so the default is going to be at level seven. You can set a buffer size, I believe the default is 4096 bytes, but we'll see that in a second here. So let's go ahead and click OK. Uh, buffer size should be set. Okay, so you do have to set it. So 496 is the minimum. That's interesting because from the CLI, let me just pop over there real quick. Oh, I'll spell it out for you guys. I'm sorry, I use shortcuts quite often. So logging buffered, you can hit enter here and it will automatically, I believe, use a 4096. So you don't really have to specify it there, but let's go ahead and specify 4096 bytes. And if our theory is correct, this is the default. When we do see the command being sent to the router, it will not specify a buffer size. So let's check that out now. So I did have, remember I had to click preview commands before sending it to the router. We should see the commands that are going to be sent to change our configuration once I finally let go of this OK button. Booyah. Well, I guess I was wrong. So. <laughs> Logging buffered 4096 is the bytes. Debugging, that's your logging level. So you can see this is all one command. Even though you clicked a couple different spots and added information, the command that you're going to send to the router itself is going to be one command. So it's saying, turn on my logging buffers. Go ahead and set that buffer size to 4096 bytes. And I'm going to log level debugging, which is level seven, which is everything. So all syslog messages that are generated on this router, I want to be stored in my buffer. And we're gonna go ahead and deliver this. And it takes just a second, it's done. And so now we can see that this was updated. Whereas before this was disabled and there was no buffer size and there was no logging level, uh, a couple things to take in note here. The default, remember we didn't specify anything special for this is debugging, which is level seven. And again, I'll touch on this default for your remote syslog is six. Uh, our remote syslog is still disabled. What's interesting is we pop out of here real quick and go to monitor. We should see some type of log here. Now, when you first get on here, one of the things you wanna do is, first of all, verify that your logging buffer is enabled, which it is, and the level is debugging. You can select a view. So right now it's filtering out anything that is emergencies and below. I think emergencies is two. I can never remember the numbers on here. If you wanna see all of them, you can either click debugging or all. We'll just do all here. And you might have to click update. Now there should be a lot, I guess there isn't anything in there yet. Well, we'll cheat. 